Hey everybody, Patrick here. You know me as Rig Papa on the Vera Community Forums. And it's Saturday, so it's a great day to not shave and make a video. Um, today I'm going to talk about presence detection, which is using a motion sensor to control the state of a light. We can, uh, for example, have the motion sensor turn the light off when no motion is detected in the room after a period of time, uh, and possibly turn the lights on when motion is detected so that uh, you don't need to go reaching for the switch. As soon as you walk in, the lights just come on. So let's set up and go do exactly that, one of the most common home automation tasks. Okay, so we're all set to go. And as you can see here, I have my garage lights and I've got my empty reactor sensor and I've got my garage motion sensor all set to go. Now, watch what happens if I activate the garage motion sensor. You're gonna see this turn to red right here. That indicates that it's tripped and then it untrips. So this motion sensor responds fairly quickly. It's got a, it's got a very short pulse um, when it detects motion. Uh, so let's go into the reactor sensor and let's make the motion sensor control the lights. And the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna go to conditions and I'm just gonna take this first condition, it's a comment, and I'm gonna change it to a device state condition. I'm gonna choose my motion sensor and from the, uh, from the menu here, I'm gonna choose whenever the device detects motion, whether it's armed or disarmed. Um, we don't care about the armed or disarmed state. That's a special thing that coincides with Vera house modes. Uh, that we're, we're not using that here. So we'll just look strictly at tripped equals one. Tripped is the value that's set on a security sensor, a motion sensor, a door sensor, something like that. Um, when, the, um, when the sensor is tripped, when the sensor is in its active state. And when the sensor is in its inactive state, it'll have a zero for tripped. So... We've got the motion sensor test now done. That's all we need to do to test if the motion sensor is sensing motion or not. Let's go over to activities and there. And since the, um, since the only condition that we have is directly in the root group of our reactor sensor, we can just put our actions right here. So when the reactor sensor one is true, which will follow that condition, when the condition is true, we're gonna do device action, garage lights, turn on or off, and I'm going to choose on and then I'm going to do the counter action down here turn the garage lights off for when it goes false all right so I've done that so let's go see what that does for us now back out at the devices I'm going to activate my motion sensor here so it goes to tripped state the reactor sensor goes to trip then the lights go on the motion sensor resets the reactor sensor untrips and the lights go off so we have now control of the light by the motion sensor. But the problem is, is that this motion sensor has a short pulse for detecting motion. And so we don't want it to turn off the lights immediately when it's no longer detecting motion. We want to delay a little bit. So let's add a delay here to our reactor sensor. We're going to go to conditions. And what we want to do is we want to delay the off. We want to delay this condition going false. And we can do that by clicking this arrow here that I just did. That's the, um, opens up the options. And these are the condition options. And I, down here, I have delay reset for condition. And I can set this. If we wanted to say the lights should stay on for 15 minutes after no motion is detected, then I would put 900 in here. And the lights would stay on for 15 minutes. If there's no motion detected, it starts a 900 second timer and then when that timer expires then this condition will go false it will hold this condition true uh, the rest of the time you know throughout the timer running uh, because we're here on a on a video I'm gonna just make this 10 seconds or actually I'm gonna make it 15 seconds so it's a nice pregnant pause and you can actually see it um, but we're not waiting for 15 minutes to see what happens so we'll save that we don't need to change any of our actions I'm gonna go back outside and now when I activate the motion sensor here, the motion sensor will trip, the lights come on, and now the motion sensor has reset, but our reactor sensor is still tripped and our lights are still on. And so now that 15 second timing period is ticking away. And at the end of that 15 second timing period, reactor will expire and the condition will go false and will turn off the lights like that. Very easy. So this is the simplest implementation of a motion controlled light with a delay in reactor. This is the straight line simplest thing you can do. It's one condition with a delay reset and the activities to turn on the light and turn off the light. Dead simple and real quick, lightweight on your system. Okay, uh, let's do a more complicated example. 
So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use groups and group activities and I'm going to make a I'm going to make separate tests for when the lights go on and when the lights go off and I, and we'll we'll go into why we're doing that later but it's just another way to implement the same thing we've already implemented that's a little more complicated. So the first thing I'm going to do I'm going to clear out my uh, condition here and I'm going to go to my activities and I'm just going to clear these out so that we're starting with a blank slate. All right, so our reactor sensor is now completely back uh, to to zero to emptiness. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a group here and I'm going to call this group motion on. And I'm going to add my single condition as I had before. So now I'm adding this condition or the condition in a group. We previously had it up at the root level, motion sensor, text motion, whether it's armed or disarmed, that's it. Okay, and I'm not going to put any options on this. I'm not going to put any options on this at all. So now if I go back to my activities, you're going to see I now have an extra set of activities that I didn't have before. I have an activity for when the motion on group goes true and an activity for when the motion on group goes false. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add an, acti an action here to turn the lights on. Whoops. Uh, garage lights. There we are. And that. And I'm going to turn the lights on when the motion on is true. So this will turn the lights on when this condition group goes true. And this condition group will go true because it's an AND group. This condition group will go true when all of the conditions inside it, which are only one, uh, when the garage motion sensor is tripped. So that turns the lights on. Now we want to make a separate group to turn the lights off. So now I'm going to add the same condition, device state, garage motion sensor. But this time I want to detect when there's no motion, when it stops detecting motion. I'm going to call this, by the way, let me rename this group right now before I forget. Motion off. Okay. So in the previous example, in the one condition example, uh, we were able to use the delay reset uh, to, to basically delay the turn off of the light um, when no motion was detected. Here we have two separate conditions, so we can't use delay reset on the motion on, but we can use uh, delay on the motion off. But because motion off, this is now the opposite. Motion off will be true when no motion is detected because we're testing tripped equals zero, not tripped equals one. So what we're going to do is instead of using the delay reset here for this condition, we're going to use the sustained for delay on this condition. And we would put our 900 for 15 minutes in here. That means if motion has not been detected for 15 minutes, then this condition will go true. Um, and again, because we're on a video here, I'm not going to do it for 15 minutes. I'm going to put in my 15 seconds as I did before in the previous example. Uh, and let's save that. Okay, so now we have our motion on and our motion off groups. And I'm going to go back into activities. And now you see I have two more activities that have been added for the motion off group. So now when motion off is true, that is when no motion has been detected, that group will go true. Now I want to turn off the lights. So I'm going to add my device action for garage lights, turn on or off off there. Now, just to make this screen a little less confusing, I'm going to go hide all the actions we're not using. So when motion on is true, I turn on the lights. And when motion off goes true, I turn off the lights. The way these conditions are structured, because they're looking at the same variable, but looking at opposite values, the opposing values, it's not possible for these two conditions to be true at the same time. So only one of the two actions is going to run and they'll interchange. So let's go ahead and run this now and see what it looks like. And it should perform pretty much the same as our simple form example. So I'm going to tickle the motion sensor here and it trips and the lights go on. So that's fine. Notice the reactor sensor isn't tripped in this one. And that's because of the way the group logic is working out. But it doesn't matter. It's still performing the actions. 
uh, the tripped state of the reactor sensor is actually not what matters. So we've seen our reactor sensor here has gone, or our motion sensor rather, has gone back to untripped, and then there was the delay, and then false. Let's look at that again just to make sure we caught it. We're going to tickle the motion sensor, and the lights immediately came on. Now the motion sensor is off, and we're counting down our delay, maybe 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, and lights out. Very simple. Now, again, why would we do this? If we can do this in one condition, why would we split it into two conditions to make it more complicated? Um, and the answer to that is usually you have to split conditions or make things a little bit more complicated when you want to add more conditions to whatever you're doing. And in this case, what I'm going to do is we're going to add to these rules that I only want to turn the motion sensor light on between sunset and sunrise. So that puts an additional condition on this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a sunrise sunset condition here, say between and between sunset and sunrise, and I'm going to save it. Now, you might ask, why couldn't I just add the sunrise sunset condition to the last example? And, and you know, would that still work? And the answer is yes, it would still work, but there's one thing it wouldn't do anymore. Because we were, we were gating that one condition with sunrise and sunset, um, it would turn the lights, it would allow the lights to be turned on by motion between sunrise and sunset, but it would never turn the lights off during the day, even if they were left on. So if the lights were left on in the garage and there was no motion, the lights would just stay on until sunrise or sunset, and then the timing would take effect and it would turn the lights off. In this example, in this structure with a separate motion on and motion off group, you can turn the lights on manually in the garage, and they'll go on, and they'll stay on until no motion has been detected in, detected in the garage for 15 minutes. And maybe you want that and maybe you don't, but again, this is just an example. So now we have between sunrise and sunset gating our motion on, but nothing gates our motion off. And so this will, the motion off will work day and night to keep the lights from being left on. But motion on will only ha happen automatically between sunset and sunrise. And I'll show you what that looks like here in status. And um, now because we have the sunrise sunset condition and it's 1238 in the afternoon, if I activate the motion sensor, you'll see the condition states change here, but we don't satisfy the motion on condition because we're not between sunset and sunrise, obviously. So you can't see the full activity run, but this is basically how it works. So what have we done here? We've, we've created the simplest possible condition, which is a one condition with a delay. Uh, for doing motion controlled lights in a in a room in a space, so proximity or presence detection in a room, and we've used two conditions and split the on and off activities. And we've actually by doing that, I've shown you how you can use different activities on condition groups. And so remember that we assign different activities to condition groups, and we weren't just working with whether or not the reactor sensor was tripped or untripped, but we were working with whether particular groups were were true or false. The result of particular tests and groups were true or false. So you can set activities on a per group basis and that's really handy. Okay, I hope this video has been helpful to you. Um, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. As usual, if you want to subscribe and be notified when other videos uh, come out, hit the subscribe button down below and there's a little bell icon next to it that you can also click uh, to be notified when new videos come out right away. Uh, again, my name is Patrick. Uh, I am Rig Papa, R I G P A P A, on the Vera Community Forums. And I hope to see you there, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.